It was a very busy week in government with 10 boards and committees meeting. Monday began with the Middle School Building Committee. The team went through potential sites where a new middle school could be constructed. Justin Tebow walked the committee through the middle school construction timeline, with their next milestone having been the community forum, which took place Thursday night. The planning board also held a meeting Monday night. The board held a public hearing with representatives of Bank of America, located at 699 Washington Street. Heather Dudko, the sign permit consultant for the bank, presented two proposed internally lit signs. There are letters, right, Bank of America, so it's just the letters that are internally lit. It's not a, it's not a full internally lit uh, panel. Am I, am I correct? correct? It's just the letters. So yes. if you look at it, you're going to see Bank of America lit up, but that's all you're going to see lit up is the letters B A N K, et cetera, right? That's correct. They're individually individually mounted channel letters, and the logo is a separately mounted uh, logo. So you're correct. It's not on a panel. It's not a box sign. It's individually mounted letters. So it's just each letter is internally on the lit, not a. Correct. It's not a big so billboard. Correct. So just the face of each letter is lit. The light will come okay. through the face of each letter. All right. I'm okay. That, thank you. That that clears it up for me. That's I don't. I didn't want to see a panel up there. But thank you. No. After continuing the hearing, Joe Collins of the town manager's office gave an in-depth presentation on the Route One economic impact study. So the purpose of the of this study was to develop an inventory of all of the businesses on the Route One corridor. Uh, to understand the financial impact of all of the businesses and some of the homes on the Brown Quarter on the over town's overall revenue, uh, of the town's revenues, and try to figure out if certain sectors generate more utility tax revenue than other sectors. And I did, basically, this this study has three analyses. One, one of them was looking at the overall impact of the town um, sector type. And then just broadly, business types, what type of uh, impact they have versus other business types. The planning board will meet again in the coming weeks. The final meeting of Monday night was the Finance Commission. Tony Mazzucco began the meeting briefing the commission on the first set of NOAA's first responders to receive the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. One of many agenda items included an approved reserve fund transfer of $150,000 as an emergency appropriation for the damaged security gate at Nord Airport, as well as an update on the remote special town meeting in early February. Other agenda items included an update free cash total and a middle school building committee update. The Finance Commission will meet again in a few weeks. Tuesday night in the Public Safety Community Room, the Board of Selectmen received a COVID-19 update from Health Director Segal Rees. Ms. Rees presented current NORD testing statistics and data. She said that NORD Hospital had a part to play in greater testing numbers. And uh, we were able to increase access to testing in NORD by working with NORD Hospital to secure the testing trailer. Um, we've allocated funds to test patients and residents who are either self-pay or don't have insurance. Um, and access to testing is just a vital tool that we have to control the virus and the pandemic. Russ McGuire, manager of Norwood Memorial Airport, briefed the board on the accident that occurred on airport property last week and the damage that had been caused. Uh, the reserve fund transfer uh, is due to uh, a security breach and some property damage, which happened uh, on Monday, January 4th at about 1.50 p.m. Uh, this made the, uh, the news. Most people have uh, seen at least uh, uh, heard mention of the, uh, the security breach. Uh, a motorist ran through vehicle security gate number one, which is adjacent to flight levels passenger terminal. This prompted a response by airport management, flight level, our air traffic control tower personnel, uh, Nord police and fire, and ultimately the Transportation Security Administration. Uh, shortly after the motorist dem uh, actually demolished the gate, uh, she drove uh, at a high rate of speed south along uh, the north-south taxi lane inside the fence. This is an aircraft operating area. Uh, she then drove off the pavement into the wetlands uh, where she was on foot until she ultimately was apprehended by the North police. Uh, she was brought into custody and her vehicle was uh, eventually pulled out of the wetlands, uh, thanks in large part to uh, members of the fire department 
in the exposure suits, which uh, the gentleman went actually out into the wetlands uh, to uh, uh, work alongside a, uh, uh, a company that was able to winch the, uh, the vehicle out of the wetlands. Alan Slater, chair of the Middle School Building Committee, gave a presentation on the work being done with Compass Management and AI3 on what a new Coakley Middle School could look like. Slater described what the 21st century middle school should look like and gave a timeline of when Nord can expect a new building if approved. The Board of Selectmen will meet again on January 26th. Also Tuesday night, the Library Board of Trustees met with a full agenda. The meeting started with Chair John Hall acknowledging a larger than normal crowd, including the incoming Library Director Clayton Cheever and a few residents with interest in running for a trustee position this spring. The trustees approved the hiring of a consultant for the 2022 to 2026 strategic plan, discussed the plan for the FY 2022 budget, and Library Director Charlotte Kennelly updated the board on the status of the two job positions open at the library. At the end of the meeting, trustee Marguerite Cummings offered a special tribute to Charlotte Kennelly, who will be retiring after 12 years as library director. Tonight is Charlotte's last night with all of us. So I just wanna take this time to say, I'm gonna try to say how much we just are gonna miss you and um, how sad we are to see you go, but how happy we are that you're going out healthy, happy, having that, your whole life ahead of you. And I wanna thank you so much for the last 12 years for all you've done, not just for the library, but for every person that's walked through the library. Every single person, every single patron, every single employee, for everything you've done for Minuteman, for the for the everybody in the um, Massachusetts Library Association, the ALA, everybody whose life you've touched in the library, you've meant so much to so many people. You've done a yeoman's work. Thank you, Charlotte, for all you have done. Everyone at NCM wishes you the very best. It has been a pleasure working with you. The final meeting of Tuesday night was the Trails Advisory Committee, who met for the first time since the new year. The members reviewed previous trail walks that they have completed since the last meeting. Much of the discussion was centered around trails located outside of Norwood. Also during the meeting, members discussed the New Year's first hike at Vanderbilt Astor Ave, and also the New Year's first hike in Walpole. To end, the committee planned an upcoming walk at the University Ave Conservation Commission property. The next meeting for the Trails Advisory Committee will be February 9th. Wednesday afternoon, the Norwood Airport Commission held their first meeting of 2021. Jeff Adler of Du Bois and King gave a brief AIP project update. The board then discussed the revocation of Gregory Grant's security badge. Mr. Grant's privileges were revoked after performing erratic maneuvers in this vehicle in the airport parking lot. The board reinstated his clearance after a strict warning. The airport commission will meet again next month. Later that evening, the CPC met and welcomed a new member to the committee, Julie Barber Issa. The committee is requesting funding for the Carolyn Bell project at town meeting on February 4th. The board voted to move the Carolyn project discussion to the January 27th public hearing. The committee voted to close out the St. Gabriel Chapel project as it has been completed. The CPC will be holding their public hearing on January 27th at 5.30. The final meeting of Wednesday night was the school committee. The school start time task force kicked off the meeting continuing their presentation. Brian Riley, Dr. Margot Frasick, Dr. Hugh Galligan, and Nancy Coppola all presented and touched upon how school start time would affect and benefit all age levels of school age children. Dr. Frasick talked about the survey results from the staff, student, and parents and recommended start times for each age level. Basically, we are making a recommendation to the school committee, um, and this is what our recommendation is. We are recommending for our elementary schools to change their start times to a range of between 7.40 and 7.50, ending around 1.55 p.m. Uh, for the Willet to start in a range somewhere between 8 and 8.10, ending somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.30 p.m. The high school starting between 8.10 and 8.20, ending around 2.50. Um, and the Coakley, the middle school, starting around 8.40 or 8.50, ending somewhere around 3.20 in the afternoon. Um, and I just want to note that um, we gave ranges just because when we actually sit down, if the school committee does, in fact, vote to make a change, um, 
we need a little flexibility when working with our transportation to make sure that the buses can all line up and that sort of piece. So we didn't, there, there will eventually be actual start and stop times. We will not leave this sort of uh, nice ambiguous range of times, but uh, we wanted to leave them at this point, narrow them down to where we want them, but didn't want to pin ourselves down to 8.43 in the morning or, or something along those lines. It'll really depend on um, bus drop-offs, bus pickups, uh, and how the bus routes work. Joan Giblin made a motion for the task force subcommittee to bring their recommendation forward during their next appearance in March. The motion was passed by the committee. Public Health Director Segal Reese gave an update on the vaccine distribution for phase two when K through 12 educators are able to get the vaccine. Reese and Dr. Thompson have been working together to come up with a plan to execute and deliver the vaccine to educators. Last week, after announcing that no spectators would be allowed at the winter sports to start the season, Dr. Thompson explains what his reasoning was behind that decision. Um, and Dr. Thompson made the decision to previously stop home spectators. And as he just shared, um, we'll most likely reverse that decision after he talks with Dr. Galligan and Mr. Longley tomorrow. Um, he's made these decisions in consultation with Ms. Reese, um, but they are the appropriate people to make these decisions, not the school committee. You know, and I think it I think it needs to be said at this point in time that it was not an intention to d disenfranchise parents. Uh, we've made a tremendous effort with NCM to make sure every single game has been uh, has been broadcast and streamed. Um, and you know they do not only a great job, they do they do pretty much a, a professional job uh, when they do that. It, it's very well done and, and compliments to them. And I jokingly say that Norwood has the world's greatest light department, cable company, DPW. Uh, it's amazing. So, uh, we are, we are very lucky with that, but my priority at that point in time, looking at those numbers, we had two choices. Either we could be creative and see if we could find a way to break the cycle or we could have paused sports and gone remote. And I am prioritizing, having our students come into class, and I am prioritizing having our athletes on the field or on the ice. Those are the first two priorities. Not to be mean as a parent of an athlete myself, but be, that is not a number one priority. Those are the first two priorities. Those are who I am looking out for. I wanna keep this going as long as possible. I do not want to flip to remote. We will do so. And in some cases, I will be cautious to make sure that happens. The school committee will meet in two weeks on January 27th. The final meeting of the week was the Middle School Building Committee Community Forum. Members of the public were invited to register and join the meeting to learn all about the plans for a new middle school in Norwood. Committee members and members of Compass Project Management, the team that was hired to build and design the new building, were all in attendance to answer all questions that were asked. For complete government coverage, tune into the NCM Government Channel or watch it on demand at norwoodcommunitymedia.org.